Hello everybody, um, my name is Marianne and I hope that this works. I'm joining you via video um, as unfortunately I can't be with you in Albania in person. But I do hope that what I say will be helpful and will come across well um, through the video. I work for an organisation called Justice Studio which is a consultancy um, an advisory um, organisation and I have extensive experience working for the public um, bodies and for non-government organisations. I'm based in the UK and I've worked um, in the UK and in wider Europe um, and in, in Asia and Africa and over my 12 years of experience I've worked on projects to improve the situation of children in detention um, for clients such as the UK government, UNICEF, Penal Reform International and also um, the Juvenile Justice Observatory. What I'm going to talk about is, um, is first of all why we should care about children in detention and then have a look at what the international standards are that govern the, um, the world of, of juveniles in detention and then what I found in Albania when I was there in November and finally how we can take some next steps and just some messages for the future. So first of all, thinking about why we should care about young people in detention. We should care about them because they're the most vulnerable of groups in our society. They have not only been deprived of their liberty, but they've been separated from their family and friends. They've been taken away from their homes and placed, in some cases, very far away from their communities. And if they've been in school, they've been taken away from school. And not only this, but they're also disregarded and treated with um, disdain by much of society. Society don't like them, and so they don't really pay attention to their situation. In short, children who enter prison are taken away from society and hidden from scrutiny. Most of the general public don't care about or don't think about what happens to children in detention. Um, in fact, many of them don't know what happens to children in detention. But this is why these children are so vulnerable and this is why it's so important that monitoring bodies such as the People's Advocate are doing their good work in highlighting what happens to children in detention. So, as we know, there are a number of international and, um, and European standards which govern how, um, how we look at children in detention and how we can ensure that they are, their, their rights are upheld. And um, one of the key phrases that you see in the European and international standards is this phrase that de deprivation of liberty should be used as um, a disposition of last resort and used only for the shortest possible time. And you see this phrase in all of the international standards um, and it's mentioned in many reports, but as we know, it's not actually put in practice at all um, in practice because we've got so many children who are in detention. Um, but nevertheless, we still need to pay attention to the international standards, even if we're not actually practically using them right now. Um, and the most important principle in the international standards is um, that comes originally from the 1989 Convention on the Rights of the Child. And Article 37, which looks at detention and punishment, is the most important one there. And that says that children who break the law should not be treated cruelly, they should not be put in prison with adults, and they should, be kept, they should keep in contact with their families. They should not be sentenced to death or life imprisonment without possibility of release. There are other standards that kind of elaborate more on those principles um, and these are the UN Standard Minimum Rules for the Administration of Juvenile Justice which was um, created in 1985 and that's otherwise known as the Beijing Rules. The other one is specifically related to children in detention and that is called the UN Rules for the Protection of Juveniles Deprived of Their Liberty and that was um, created in 1990 and that's otherwise known as the Havana Rules. And then a more recent um, standard is the UN Rules for the Treatment of Women Prisoners and Non-Custodial Measures for Women Prisoners, and that also looks at girls in detention, and that's otherwise known as the Bangkok Rules. And to put all of these things in more detail, um, to look at the situation of children in, in juvenile justice uh, in more detail, there's the, the, the UN CRC General Comment Number 10, um, and that was made in 2007. Now, I was in Albania in November, from the 5th to the 7th of November, and when I was there, I was supporting the team of the People's Advocate, um, helping them with the tools and also helping them to carry out their inspections um, in the places that they went to. Now, I was there for the um, inspections of, of Lausanne Prison and also Kavaye Prison 
but I wasn't there for the um, the inspections of the police attention, although I am very familiar with the results that have come out from that um, from those visits. So in terms of what we found um, as part of this general project and what I saw is that we saw both good practice and practice that can be improved. Um, so, for example, separation is one of the most important things in a juvenile justice system and especially when we're looking at children who are in detention. Um, it's integral that children are separated from adults because um, adult criminals can have a very devastating effect on children and they need to be protected from them. Now, we saw that in Kavaya prison, the children were completely separate. It's a completely separate institution. Um, the regime is catered to young people. There are lots of facilities for young people and they're being looked after in a, fam in a, in a family type way. Um, and so we really felt that that institution was doing a good job in terms of being a specifically dedicated site for children in detention. Um, and that's the best possible environment that they can be in. However, unfortunately, we saw that in the police stations, there was no such separation at all. There were no specific places to interview children or to keep children if they're being detained. Um, and so police were just improvising and doing what they could with the small resources that they had. But this meant that children were not being properly um, looked after and not being properly um, interrogated in conditions that would um, would be good for them. And, um, and essentially not really fulfilling the international standards at all of separation. And we also saw that in Lazar prison, and I'll tell you, say more about that um, a bit later on. One of the other things that we observed um, is the need to ensure kind of due, due process and ensure that children are getting um, the, the, the rights that they, that they are meant to have upheld. And while we found that in most police stations, many children were being given the correct interview procedures, um, for example, they're being accompanied by their parents and a lawyer um, and or psychologist. Some children, some one particular group of children, Roma children, were le much less likely to have um, to have these kind of facilities and their parents weren't being um, con um, contacted. And therefore, these for these Roma children, they weren't having their rights upheld and they weren't being treated in the same way. And we need to ensure that this is not happening and that there is equality across all children so that all children are getting the proper <clears throat> the, properly their rights upheld. Um, I mean for example we see that the European Commission in 2013 specifically asked member states to ensure that they tackle um, the special needs of Roma children and not discount them and ensure that they're upheld and treated equally. Now it's useful to look at Europe in general because Albania is is obviously in Europe and um, Europe is not good as a continent um, at, um, at looking after children um, in conflict with the law. And particularly we see that Europe in general locks up very many children and puts very many children into detention. Um, in the UK, in my own country, there are many, many hundreds of children who are in detention and it's a situation which must change and should change. In Albania, we know from the study and this project that we've been doing that approximately 90 children come into conflict with the law each month. And of those, approximately um, 60 to 70 of these will enter pre-trial detention. And that's a large majority of such children who are being given detention when they're really meant to be considered innocent. Now, detention is a trauma. The Council of Europe in 2003 highlighted the prevalence and incidence of suicide, attempted suicide, bullying, self-harm and mental health problems that affect young people and children who are held in detention. And studies from the USA have shown that incarcerated young people experience from double to four times the suicide rate of young people in the community. And we have to pay attention to these facts because being in detention is a trauma. The Council of Europe in 2003 recognised that pre-trial detention is even more harmful to children because it has all of those effects and yet the children may not have even committed the crime. So they might not even be guilty of committing an offence. So the unfairness really hits home for those children. And in turn, we generally tend to see that pre-trial detention conditions are, are worse than for those children who are serving sentences for which they've been sentenced in court. And that's a situation that I encountered um, in Albania as well. 
Um, I mean, in Lazar prison, where the children were housed, um, as I said, they were not separated from adults. They had one floor in the prison, which was basically an adult prison. Um, the children can see adults from their windows, they're housed in the same block as them, and um, then they can talk to them and exercise with them. And the state of the accommodation in Lazar prison was generally dangerous and unhygienic, and we saw rubbish on the ground, broken glass, dirt and cigarette butts in the corners of the rooms and the corridors. Um, and because the accommodation is extremely close to that of the adults, it's also noisy and busy and does not create a rehabilitative, a rehabilitative environment. Um, <clears throat> in fact, it's intimidating and it doesn't feel safe. It didn't feel safe for me as an adult. So I imagine how horrible that must be for a child. And because of this, one of the recommendations um, from this project is that the children in Lejar prison um, that, that then moved to Gavaye prison and that that section is permanently closed. So thinking about how we can improve the situation um, in Albania for children in detention, I think that the most important thing to do is exactly what this project is doing, which is first understanding the situation um, and then looking at, in detail at the situation of children in conflict with the law. And this is what is the real strength of this project, because this project is helping to uncover what might otherwise not be seen and helping the people's advocate to feel really confident and strong in their position of highlighting the situation for children in detention. Now, most of the recommendations that come from the Council of Europe and for the UN, they first ask countries to be aware of the situation of children in conflict with the law. And so in that sense, this project has helped Albania to to come um, to come to to be very far in um, in that process, and um, and it's worth telling you that in the last year or so, there's been uh, a decision to have a global study on children in detention, and that's being led by UNICEF and a collection of NGOs, including Defence for Children International, um, and a specific expert called Manfred Novak has been um, appointed to lead this study, and he is the former UN Special Rapporteur. Um, repertoire of torture. So this study will look at all forms of detention for children, um, not just criminal justice places but also other residential places for children um, such as special schools and psychiatric hospitals. Now with this project and this accompanying report we can see that Albania is, is already contributing to the knowledge base of this, um, of this type of global study. And indeed, without data that is being collected on this project, it's impossible to know where you're performing well and where you can improve your performance. But the point of this is that data shouldn't be just collected for its own sake. The reason that we collect data and write reports is so that the government can be led to making the necessary policy changes and doing things to improve the situation for children on the ground. We know that putting children in prison um, is a trauma, and we know that it's more likely to harm them and make them less able to live a law-abiding life. Indeed, there's compelling evidence to suggest that detaining young people makes them more rather than less likely to commit offences when they leave prison. Economists have even shown us that the, pr the process of imprisoning children um, reduces their future earning potential and it means that they're less likely to be um, a contributor in terms of the country's economy in the future. As such, it's extremely important that for those children who are in detention, if they have to be there, and if we can't say that, they're not that it's not necessary for, the, for them to be there, that their sentence is used in the most productive way possible, and we help them to become the best people that they can be when they leave prison. In order to do this, we need to put in place a system that is nurturing of them, and also the people that work there and work with them. So I urge the government to think about giving dedicated resources to enhancing the training and professionalisation of the police and prosecutors and prison officers so that they feel confident and happy to work with children. Also, we need to ensure that all of the different actors that can help a child are helping the child and they're working together. So I'm talking about people in the justice system, those from social services, those who look after accommodation service, services and also the health service. We need them to be working together um, and not passing responsibility from one organisation to another, but trying to work out a solution that is shared. 
And finally, we need to ensure that there is a clear and individual plan of action for each child and that that plan is based on a full assessment of what their situation is and what their background is. And that it plots out an effective plan for their whole sentence so that then they receive education and vocational training opportunities and opportunities to build good relationships with staff. And in this way, they should be helped to address the core factors that led to their offending in the first place and hopefully help to stop this offending in the future. I think with effort, we can ensure that as few children who enter the prison system as possible in Albania, and that those who do are still given the appropriate education and training that will help them to be not a burden on the economy, but to be able to contribute meaningfully towards it. This project, I think, has really helped to highlight the situation of children in detention and expose um, their, con their conditions. And I hope that everybody listens to what the report says and what the People's Advocate has found. And I hope that in this way, children in the criminal justice system can fully contribute to the advancement of Albania, as all of you good people are yourselves. Thank you very much.